So here on the right we have the iPhone 5 in black which I've had since it came out last September. I can't believe it's almost a year old already and this is Nokia's latest Lumia, the, 90, the 925. This is the flagship model, it's not the, the high spec 41 megapixel beast. This is very much Nokia's latest flagship and if we take a look at the design first you'll see that on the back we've got this um, kind of soft touch plastic back panel. The rest of the body, like the iPhone, is made out of aluminium. It's all the unibody design, there's no removable back panel, you can't take the battery out, swap it out or anything like that. Which means that the device itself is very, very sturdy. Similar to the iPhone, I think in terms of elegance, the iPhone probably is a slightly more attractive, a little bit more elegant, much lighter, smaller in the hand, but um, I've not had any issues at all holding the Lumia. It's got really nice curved edges, you can see them on there a nice flat back and the, the soft touch plastic really does help it feel good in hand. Now if I was to give my opinion on the design, I've written an article and I'm going to be embedding this video in that article and my opinion really is that in terms of elegance and beauty and, and just the way it looks, uh, I'd have to go with the iPhone but if I went with how it feels, the Nokia Lumia I think feels better in hand. I do prefer a slightly larger phone and the curved edges and the soft touch back really make it very easy to hold. Let's talk displays here and obviously the iPhone you know is a 4 inch display, it's 1136 by 640 pixels giving it a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. Now the Lumia has slightly more pixels per inch, it is 331 pixels per inch but it is AMOLED based. It's a 4.5 inch screen and it has 768 by 1280 pixels. You will notice that actually the iPhones is that slight bit sharper when it comes to crisp text and pictures. So again it's another case where I, I kind of have two opinions. For outdoor use the Nokia's display is fantastic. I noticed a huge difference when I took these outside and I'll show you some um, video clip in a minute. Now when I was going out to test the cameras which I did last week uh, what I did notice was that actually seeing what was on the screen outdoors on the Nokia was so much easier than it was to see what was on the iPhone's display. But then again indoors um, I found that the iPhone was actually a lot crisper, a lot sharper especially for things like text. Colour reproduction is much clearer, much more true um, on the iPhone so whites are pure white and the colours are as they should be. With the AMOLED display you kind of, it's not very noticeable but there is a very slight tint on the whites and if you put the brightness down a little bit you will find that some of the white parts look a little bit fuzzy and grey but that's not going to affect day to day use and it certainly shouldn't be something that changes your mind as to which one to go for because actually viewing video content on the Nokia is just as pleasant as viewing video content on the iPhone. I was going to say one for outdoors definitely the Nokia if you use it outside a lot you're in a lot of bright light then the Nokia is going to be the one um, for everything else the iPhone but again um, texting as well if I just grab uh, just a message you'll see that actually because the screen's so large actually texting on here is very very easy even in portrait mode and that's something that I do struggle with on the iPhone because of its display size because of the size of the phone I do struggle to use two hands in portrait mode texting and one hand is just too slow and so in the end I, I normally just give up. I have done a camera comparison already so I won't go into too much depth but just to say Nokia Lumia outperforms the iPhone in low light by a long way. The iPhone in daylight however will give you a shot that gives you a lot more natural representation of colours and contrast. It looks like a real thing whereas the, the Nokia is kind of comes out a little bit flat in terms of colour so you'll get um, high ex exposure, uh, high contrast without anything in the middle so it kind of you get the two extremes. Um, it didn't look so great but it's not something you can't fix in the edit afterwards. They're both 8 megapixels but again I would say the Lumia's was better just because um, low light performance is just massively better than the iPhones. Now in terms of other performance You'll see here as I'm flicking through this that it responds really well on the Nokia. If I scroll through different menus, it's really smooth and fluid. If I move to a different app, it will open it up with a really nice animation. It's there and I can open up another app. And if I go into multitasking, you can see I can flick through all these other apps that I've got and I can just go straight 
into another one and it opens up straight away. And you'll see similar fluidity on the iPhone. Now, although I am using iOS 7, which is a little bit buggy slightly, um, I haven't really noticed, even when I was using iOS 6, obviously the iPhone 5 is, again, very fluid. It's designed to take your action before anything else, so it responds to your finger really well. And switching between apps is, again, very smooth. So in that, in that aspect, or in that regard, both phones are pretty similar. One thing you will notice about the two, again, it's another kind of one of them's got something great, one of them's got something great, and they've equally got something awful. Now, with the Nokia, I found the battery life is absolutely fantastic. If I pop into here now, it's been four days since I charged it last, <laughs> and I haven't, I haven't, I have to say, I haven't been using it a lot, um, but you will see that actually, just to have it on standby for a few hours a day, you will see that I've got 10% of my battery left after four days. Now, if I was using it as my, when I was using it as my main device, I was getting two days out of it, which again is fantastic. The iPhone will barely get me through a day. And that was the case even when I was on iOS 6. It's not just the beta software that I'm running. So uh, battery life on the Lumia is superb. What isn't superb is the reception strength. Um, I've noticed I had to I've used both Vodafone and EE SIM cards in both phones just to compare them. Now, while I'm upstairs in my office, you'll see I've got full signal pretty much on both of them. Uh, we've got Vodafone in here and EE in the iPhone. Now, although the signal strength may be high on here, what I did find in day-to-day -day use was that when I had the SIMs the other way around, for whatever reason, I kept cutting out of signal on the Lumia. And that was really, really frustrating. So battery life, better on the Lumia. Signal strength, much better on the iPhone. Performance-wise, both are good in terms of speed and handling apps. Um, loudspeaker and call quality, equally good on both. It's not something that many phones really fail at anymore. That's, they're both really good. So it depends what you want. For me, I would prefer the battery life, and I would take that as long as I know, because I have Vodafone in there as my main number, that's okay. I was getting signal so the battery life really is a big deal and it's something that would persuade me to switch for the Lumia over the iPhone. On to my final verdict and actually using the Nokia Lumia 925 for the last couple of weeks has been a really refreshing change. I found that it gives a really good consistent experience across all the apps and all the various aspects of the user interface. It's different enough from iOS that I feel like I'm using something new so in that regard it's really great. I've loved the hardware, I love using it for typing and texting and calling. The only place it really falls short for me is, again, something that needs to change from Microsoft's point, is actually the apps. Um, there isn't uh, as many apps as you can imagine on Windows Phone as there are on iOS or even Android. Um, that's something that really needs to change, but as a piece of hardware, I found using the Lumia fantastic. In terms of performance and hardware, there's not much on the iPhone that I would say was better than the Lumia. So in that regards, it's a really, really great phone. It's something that I would definitely recommend buying if you want to change from your iPhone to something new. Um, it's really, really, <laughs> it is fantastic. I'm absolutely blown away by how Nokia's put this thing together. And really for me, the only thing that needs to improve drastically is the selection of apps in uh, Microsoft's App Store. But apart from that, you're looking at a really, really good phone, something that you will love using. I particularly like the bigger size, the larger screen. And again, the user interface is so different from iOS that it was just a really nice change for me. So definitely something to consider. If you're getting bored of your iPhone, try out Windows Phone and specifically try out the Lumia 925 because it is fantastic. Uh, I'm Cam. I'm at TAP underscore Cam on Twitter. If you want to ask me any questions, or if you want to have a go at me because I've just said that a Windows phone is fantastic and I would probably have it over an iPhone in terms of hardware, then um, please feel free. But know this, uh, the iOS App Store is amazing and it is exactly why I can never get rid of my iPhone. So it won't, although the Windows phone won't ever be my main device, the Lumia 925 is the closest thing to a device that's going to tempt me to change that I've ever used. So. That's probably as high a praise as I can give this phone. On that note, I think it's time for me to end this video. I will see you again soon.